we're going to be dying uh something a little valentine's day themed and i figured up okay. yarn um i've seen lots of people on the internet on the internet on the inter hello everyone today is valentine's day so i thought i would do um a little fun dye project to go along with the holiday and obviously you can see it is snowing you can focus Hold on. um so i figure i'd try something new that i've never done before which is snow dye which is um basically exactly what it sounds like where you take the powder uh your dye powder and pour it on top of the snow which then melts onto your fiber and uh, it creates a really cool effect. I've seen a lot of people online do it, so I figured I'd give it a shot since I have literally bucket loads of snow. So uh, let's go choose a dye, get some snow, and let's get started. As for our dye choices, I am going to use a bit of cochineal, which I need to grind up with my pestle and mortar, which should be no problem. And uh, I'll use a bit of my logwood that I have in here. I've seen tons of people on the internet use these and they often get really fun and cool results um, with squirt bottles and painting it directly on. But today we're going to just leave it under the snow and let the snow melt and see what happens. So uh, I'm going to get collect the snow and then we can get started. So as far as prep goes, the uh, yarn itself is actually pre-mornented already. I mornented it a while ago. Um, as for the dye, we do need to ground up the cochineal, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so then we can go ahead and pour the, uh, the dye onto the snow and let it sit. So to start out, I took my soft blank, the knitted uh, pre-mortented yarn, and uh, laid it out flat as possible so that uh, the dye could penetrate in all the areas it needed to penetrate. And uh, the snow will melt, uh, so we'll create a liquid that it will uh, soak in, but we want to make sure that uh, all the dye reaches every part of the sock blank from the get-go. So once my soft blank was laid out, I was able to add the snow, and obviously you can see it is in a giant clump. So I had to break it up a little bit so that it would um, so it separate. And I also tried to make it more into powder and less of the giant clumps that you can see over on the right. Um, just because you want the dye to spread evenly and not melt in giant clumps. Obviously that is the fun part, but I want to sort of make sure that there's not too many like spots where there's dye and then there's no dye. I do want to get um, color on as much spots as possible. So I ground up or crushed, I guess, all of the uh, clumps of snow just so that we can get an even coverage. Finally, the parts that you guys have all been waiting for the actual dye. So I took, I started with the logwood. Uh, so for that, I ended up just taking the um, bag and pouring it directly onto the snow. And uh, as you can see, we have a little bit of some pH shifts uh, with the dye um, and it turns brown, which I will explain in just a moment. But for now, I'm just pouring the dyes directly from the packet and onto the snow. Then um, on top, I added the cochineal, uh, sort of in the spots where the logwood wasn't so concentrated so that we had an even coverage of dye. Again, it's all about even coverage. Um, so I added the cochineal directly from the pestle and mortar and let that sit. All right, so um, a little thing unexpected happened. The logwood actually turned into the orange that you're seeing. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what happened. Obviously, temperature and pH acidity of the snow could have definitely had a factor of this. Um, but something that is definitely an unaccounted 
before um and i did not know and realized but you know it's all an experiment which is okay and honestly it looks like a very very pretty sunset um not exactly what i was going for for this video um but definitely still very pretty so i'm gonna go ahead and leave this to sit and hopefully melt and i will uh, check in with you guys tomorrow so it's been a good uh two hours ish and uh we are getting some coloration in some areas i'm just kind of using the pestle and the pestle to move the snow around um so i'm just gonna i think we are getting some coloration in some areas not quite as much as i'd like but i don't know we'll see tomorrow um so i'm just gonna uh sort of move the snow around and kind of push it in so that the dye kind of like goes into the fibers and uh then we'll, i'll check back tomorrow the thing i also did was i moved snow beneath the socks blank so that uh, the dye could go to the bottom as well so for those of you who don't know dyes will um natural dyes will react to uh different ph levels um for example the snow might be a higher ph level or lower ph level and the fiber itself with the alum is a different page level than the snow. Therefore, the dye reacts differently to the snow and the um, fiber. So uh, we are going to, so it's, this is probably done taking up color. I'm going to remove the uh, sock blank from the bucket and I'm going to put it into my dye pot. Morning everyone. So we do see definitely some coloration purple there and definitely some in the ends. So honestly, I think leaving it out in the cold and letting it sit definitely changed the color around so uh i'm gonna go run some errands for the day and i'll be back in the afternoon uh we are going to so it's, this is probably done taking up color i'm going to remove the uh sock blank from the bucket and i'm going to put it into my dye pot so for the um washing i did use warm water as first firstly to get rid of the snow stuck to the sock blank and also to set the dye to the sock blank so uh here is the finished yarn uh here are some pictures in better daylight and uh the overall this project was really fun we definitely saw some fun sciencey things going on and uh, i hope you guys try this out if you have snow next year or if you live in a place where you still have snow which if you do i am jealous but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i will see you guys in the next one bye